Hey, it's Dave Austin here, and it's another Monday at 12 o'clock Pacific time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Every Monday, some of you are getting used to this now, I do a game ready every single Monday, because this is my gift to you. When you can see your dream, and you picture your dream, and you live into your dream, everything and anything is possible. So thank you, let's see. Tim Grosso, man, this guy has been so committed. Tim, you are a superstar. You're here every single Monday, and I so appreciate you. But I also want you to reach out to me. I think I gave you my cell number. I want to see what you're doing. Tim, is. I got to know when he played uh, football for University of Hawaii with my son Shane and was part of the team that were undefeated and was in top 10 in the nation and played in the Sugar Bowl. And uh, awesome that you're so committed to to life basically because I think that's what this is, is is these kind of discussions are about how we grow even all oh, Chase Austin is on I love that and Kathy's on the the the, the beast family is, is is coming together which I so so appreciate and I celebrate so today before I do the game ready I always have a theme and the words today are it's done unto you as you believe. Now those are words that were spoken by Jesus 2,000 and some years ago. And, and you know, I'm still discovering every day new depths to those words. I mean, it really does come down to what do we truly believe? I know when I was playing professional tennis, I at one point could not believe that I could win a major tournament or a professional tournament. I had a I guess a deep enough belief system that I could play at a certain level, but I didn't allow myself to even go beyond because my belief system wasn't big enough. I hadn't, hadn't established a stronger, more profound belief system. And Sylvika is on. Love it. There's a, someone who has developed such a beautiful uh, belief system because she came from Romo Romania with nothing and has developed into an awesome coach and successful in... in in business as well. So great to have you here. So when we think about how do you develop a belief system? When you say it's done in you as you believe, and I so truly believe that is is the core of everything we do. Even with our Be Small on 30 Day Challenge, as we go through with all the animals that, that we bring forth to trigger us into right action, it still comes down to what do you believe? Do you believe this can really affect you? Does this believe that you can accomplish this. The deeper you believe it, the more success you'll have in anything you do. And it takes prep. I know when, when I was doing um, our Extreme Focus first video that we were doing with one of the Major League Baseball players that I uh, work with, and he talked about, I said, how did you come to believe that you could play in the Major Leagues? And he says, well, it's been a, it was a process, but it was a lot of prep. It's a lot of work that I did to prepare myself so that the more I prepared myself, the more I could believe in that I could achieve this. So many times, you know, we have opportunities that are there for us, but maybe our belief system isn't big enough. And so I put another thing on this, this, this Facebook Live today, and that is, do miracles exist? Is that a part of our life? Do you believe that, you know, only say 2,000 years ago that we read in the Bible or in old history, all these amazing things that took place, but do they no longer take place? Can, can absolutely some form of a miracle take place in your life today? You know, Einstein said, and I, I want to uh, reach out and say thank you to Lisa. She was the one in one of our, our mastermind calls today that said, hey, you know, you know, the Einstein quote, and I, I love some of the quotes from Einstein. Hey, Jason's out in New York right now in that cold weather, and he's just joined us. I hope you get some warmth out of this, Jason. Um, I know that it's uh, from when the mastermind we just did. I think uh, our, our gentleman, uh, Gustavo from New York, was saying it's 16 degrees out right now in New York. So uh, stay warm, my friend. But anyway, when we talk about miracles, do they exist? Einstein said, you know, there's two ways to live life. Either see everything as a miracle or see nothing as a miracle. The choice is yours. And, you know, the more that I'm willing 
to see my life as a miracle and the littlest things as a miracle, gosh, the more miracles that take place. It goes back to it's done unto you as you believe. Now, the biggest miracle of all that, I mean, there's been a lot of examples I could give you, but the one I want to give you today, some of you have heard this before, and many of you haven't. And Jay Michelle is on. Yes, I love it. You know, and if you've heard this story before, act as though this is the first time to see if you can find something even new within it. That's the way I do. Sometimes if I've heard something, I go, well, what have I missed? Maybe there's something more here. So 18 years ago in June, Kathy was pregnant with our fourth son. We're blessed to have four boys. And Emmanuel, thank you. You're on. I love the way the Beast Tribe's coming together. So anyway, we're going to have our fourth boy. And we're rejoicing in the fact that we're going to have our fourth one. And then something went wrong. It looked terribly wrong. I was back in Omaha, Nebraska at the moment. And I got a message from Kathy saying she's at the hospital. And that there were some issues. They couldn't, they had a heartbeat on Daniel, but nothing else. And so I became very, very concerned, obviously. Um, and so I, I, I ended up calling our doctor, who was a good friend of ours, just a funny guy. I needed his, his laughter right there because I knew I was probably taking it more than it really was. And I called him up and he answered the phone crying. And his first words that he said was, Dave, I'm so sorry. This is serious. And as he continued to speak, he told me that not only was I losing my child, but there was a chance I was losing my wife. And that was really challenging, very challenging. And, and the CEO that I, I was back there in Omaha for two reasons. It was the College World Series, so I was involved in that. But I was, I was uh, consulting with a, a, a company called ConAgra, which is out of Omaha. They're a big company. But, um, and Julianne Cohn is on the phone, on the phone, on the, on the live. Thank you. But I, I, as I got those words, man, I was shook to the core. And, and the CEO of the company that I was there to work with came to me and said, ooh, because I was on a pay phone. Remember pay phones? And he says, everything okay? I said, it's not about business. And he knew that my wife was pregnant at the time and said, uh, is it, is it, your wife and the baby? And I said, yeah, and I can't talk. I just couldn't. I even couldn't get words out of my mouth. And so then I, I went outside and I got under trees because I found that nature just gives me such a strength. And I prayed. I prayed. I said, Lord, give me the strength to whatever it comes here. And I know and bring your healing energy to this. Whatever it shows up as, give me the strength to, to, to live into this. And so I went back in, I told everyone at the table that I had to leave at that moment. And I made arrangements to get on a flight that afternoon back to San Diego, uh, actually to LA, sorry, we were living in, in uh, Camarillo at the time. And as I flew home, I started just writing from a voice that was just coming through me. I know this is a little deep today, it's a little deeper than probably you expected, but I'm gonna share it anyway. And it said, Daniel needs to come out tonight. The last thing that uh, the doctor said is that to save Kathy, there was no chance for survival for Daniel, that we had to take him out within the next three or four days. And on this plane ride home, I wrote, Daniel needs to come tonight, but he will be the gift to you that you need to know that you can share this depth of a miracle. I thought, well, do I have to be tested to this level? I mean, this is life and death. And I believed in the writings that came through me, but this was challenging to me. And how am I going to tell the doctors and say, oh, by the way, we're not going to wait three or four days. We're going to do it tonight. So when the plane landed in L.A., my beeper went off. Boy, this shows you it's an 18-year-old story, beepers and payphones. And I went to the payphone and I called and it was a message from, from Kathy saying, you know what? The doctors decided it had to happen tonight. And so instead of being even more worried, I was like rejoicing. Good. At least I don't have to call them and tell them, and, you know, God's told me it has to be tonight. And so uh, they said that she said that they're switching her over to in, in a um, ambulance to St. John's, I think it is in, in Oxnard. 
and uh, and at 7:20 they're going to do an emergency C-section. So I had when we had flown over into LAX, I saw 405 was just a parking lot, and so I'm thinking, what do I do? I got to get there. It's 5:30 now, and normally that's about a little over an hour drive. But I knew when, when it's like that, it could be three hour drive. So I ended up taking the coast and it was amazing. And I didn't even know where, where, where St. John's Hospital was. And on the coast highway, when it comes into Oxford and it comes back out to the 101, it, it like comes right into the hospital. And I got there and got into the uh, operating room at 720, the exact time they said that it was all going to take place. And when I first went in, they scrubbed me up, you know, I put all the whatever gear on that you, you put on and there were five doctors four nurses so a team of nine and when i walked in kathy was this pillar of strength she goes hey this is gonna guys we're gonna be fine we're gonna be fine here she was so strong i mean i gotta be honest even though i wrote this on the plane i was crying the whole time i was driving i was shook so deeply that when i walked in and i heard her strength Guys, we're going to be fine. I went, you know what? We are going to be fine. I, those were the words. And, and it wasn't just her words. It was conviction she put behind those words that just changed me in that moment. The doctors pulled me out in the hallway and they said, hey, listen, we need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And they said, look, your wife does not get the seriousness of this. She just does not understand how serious this is. I said, hey, guys, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Oh, boy. They rolled their eyes and went, oh, my God. This couple is wacko. They're wackos. And so we rolled into the operating room knowing that they had a bunch of wackos. And I'm sitting there with Kathy. And when they brought out Daniel, he was deep purple. This is my fourth son. And we've never had a C-section, so I've never seen a C-section. But there was no life. And he was completely small and all just really disformed and and I'm like, wow, okay, whatever it is, it is. And we have the strength here. And, and they take him over and they're trying to revive him and they can't revive him. And I'm with Kathy because I'm kind of focused that, okay, maybe we're not going to have Daniel. Although my writing said we, he's going to be a true life miracle. But at that moment, I'm still with Kathy. And Kathy goes, hey, I'm fine. Go and be with Daniel. And her strength was so strong and went, you got it. And when I walked over and I looked at the doctors, they had a oxygen mask on them and they couldn't get any life, no breathing, anything. I said, do I do this? And then I said, wow, why wouldn't I do this? Am I afraid of what they will think of me? So I went in, I put my hand on the little leg of Daniel. I said, Dan I said Daniel, feel the strength of my love. Feel the strength of God's healing grace. And it was like an electric charge happened. And he, he just opened his eyes and he looked into my eyes. And it was like this look of game on. And then he went back into his coma, but he started breathing. They go, we got breathing, we got breathing, you know, and all this is taking place. And then we rushed off into the, they went into the intensive care area and they, they had hooked up Daniel with all kinds of wires and things. And, and um, the doctor came to me and said, look, I just want to tell you something. Daniel's not going to make it through the night, just so you you know that. He'll be too weak to make it through the night. And right as he said that, Daniel flinched. They had turned on a light. I said, wait a minute. I said, I'm not a doctor, and I don't understand medically what's going on here. But I do know this. That's a sign. He looked at me and rolled his eyes again. He said, oh, my God, these guys are crazy. I said, that's a sign, and we are going to live into that sign, and we're going to grow that sign. That's a positive sign. And Daniel made it through the night. And the next day, now he was he was all disformed. He, his joints were all locked and everything and, and all that. And I just prayed with him. And, you know, it was like I, I, I had a playbook. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, all his arms and all the things they said he'd never be able to use or his legs, they started working, you know, and he had no brain waves. All of a sudden, a day later or so, there's brain waves. And it went on and on. There's so many incredible miracles that happened for the oh, five days, you know, and, and here's this, this no chance of survival to five days alive. And we're going miracle after miracle after miracle. And then we got called into the conference room and a new doctor we had never seen before. And he was very kind of dark and despair, but I understand he, he it's a tough situ a role that he plays. And he tells us is, is that we don't think a baby should be on a life support for their whole life. 
we just don't think it's right. And I said, and Kathy was with us, with me the whole time on this said, yeah, we don't think so either. Take this support system off, but he will live. There's no way that we had these miracles take place that now he's going to pass. You just don't have that. It's not possible. It wasn't in our belief system. And he says, but he won't be able to swallow. I said, he will swallow. And the doctor said, I like to be proven wrong. I said, game on. Came on. And so we went in, and by this time, after five days of all these miracles, the nurses were into it. Their energy was awesome. All the doctors didn't like it because medically it wasn't supposed to be possible what was taking place. But the nurses were loving it. So I said, look, we're just going for one swallow. If we get one swallow, if we get one swallow, we're winning. And so they started it. They had a little dropper and didn't get, he didn't swallow just as the doctor said he wouldn't. And guess what? All of a sudden he swallowed. One swallow. And you know what? You think would have thought we won the Super Bowl. It was awesome. We were cheering. We were celebrating. Now, if we had a different mentality, we would have thought that, gee, we were losing because there's only one swallow. But instead, that's all we were going for. We were keeping it simple. That's all we wanted was one. And then I told the, the nurses, that I said, look, from here, we're going for two. Next time we feed, we're going for two. And it just momentum built one step at a time, one swallow at a time. And day after day, all of a sudden he was eating normally. And after 10 days, now they thought that if he was to survive, which they didn't believe, he'd be in the hospital for months upon months. After 10 days, they go, take him home. We don't know what's going on, but he doesn't need to be here. So we came in, we, we came in and we picked up Daniel and one of the doctor specialists was there. And uh, I, I followed him into his office for him. I said, Is this, isn't this awesome? Isn't this incredible? Isn't this a gift from God? And he looked at me and he was really troubled. He was really troubled. And he says, medically, this is impossible. See, it, it really challenged him because everything he had learned, it didn't meet with all the things. And I'm not saying that what he learned isn't good. I mean, we couldn't, I mean medicine is important and our doctors are important and just because he couldn't understand it that was okay with me I couldn't fully understand it I just said can you live with a miracle he looked at me like no you know I said I can live with a miracle so I walked out we picked up Daniel and as we're leaving and taking him out of the hospital one of the nurses who was such a rock star the whole time comes up she goes in the 27 years I've been in intensive care. I have never witnessed anything like this in my life. I said, it's awesome. Thank you. Because of you and because of every, each and every one of you, Daniel's alive. So here we are 18 years later. Daniel's a senior in high school. And uh, we feel blessed. When he, you know, out of it, it's what spurred me on to write my first book. It's called The Unfinished Cross, Listen to the Voice Within. And it became a bestseller, but it was something that challenged me a lot because I felt like it's such a deep book. There's only a chapter on the true life story of Daniel, but that's what motivated me to, to release the book. At that time, I would have never thought of myself as an author or writing a book, but I felt the story had to be shared. So at five years old, I get a message, uh, actually an email. By that time, we did have emails, and I got an email from a producer, Hollywood producer, who had read the book and said, we'd like to do a TV special on Daniel. Is that possible? And I thought about it, and the, here's the remarkable thing, is that it was Daniel's fifth birthday. It was actually his birthday, June 4th, five years after the whole thing took place. And I went, wow, that's a sign. I said, absolutely, if you want to do a, you know, a special on Daniel, let's go for it. It's his birthday. Did you know that? She's like, oh. She couldn't, you know, it was like one of those aha moments. And so when they brought in the camera crew and everything, and they brought all the doctors together, Kathy and I are listening to the doctors and they're explaining all these things that we just go, holy mackerel, were we just in denial? One of the things is in a pH level, I think if it's uh, seven or seven one, this is actually the day that we took him out, the doctor, this was the, one of the problems one of the doctors had, he said, um, at, at seven or seven one, you live as a vegetable your whole life. 
No one in the history of medicine has been able to survive, and it's not even possible to survive at 6.8, which Daniel had been at. So, do miracles exist? Yeah. Yeah. And as we listen, though, five years later, we're going, wow, we were a little wacko. Because it was like, that's amazing. Was it the power of our belief? And what was it that created? And a miracle takes place no matter what. Even, I believe, even if Daniel had not made it, I believe in the eternity of things that some miracle was taking place and it was perfect. But we're blessed to have Daniel. And so when they brought out the TV special, it was a, a tough thing to watch, actually, because they had another family that, that had you know, a similar circumstance, but their child didn't live. And our child's did. And it's not even, this is not judgment on anyone. But their, their whole thing was like, well, does God exist in both cases? And their evidence was yes. But as if you watched the other family speak, they were defeated before they got started. And when you watched us speaking, it was completely different. And so your words and, and how you go forward are so important in creating miracles in your life every day. And that's why I go right back to the quote I started with, Einstein said, either everything is a miracle or nothing's a miracle, but it's your choice. And I believe, at least deep within me, that if you live a life that everything is a miracle and you bless every little bit, everything you have, then you'll live a life truly remarkable. So that's my game ready as far as the information I wanted to share with you today. But let's do our visualization now. What is it that you truly love? What is it that you can step into with such deep, true, strength because you're going to visualize it here that is part of creation that is how things happen you either allow your conditions to say who you are and take you or you create your conditions and how you react to them by seeing clearly seeing very very clearly where you're going so take this moment as we always if this is your first time on for a game ready you're ready for the ride those of you who have become used to this know that this is what prepares you for success I do this always with athletes before they go play and they play at the highest level it's not by accident that I've had players that were stuck in minor leagues that became MVPs that's not by accident it's by vision and stepping into your vision it's not you know and 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 the stories that I could tell you here I don't need to. Let's just do it. So take a moment, first of all, and be grateful. The power of gratitude is so incredible. So just allow yourself right now to think about the things, as I see love hearts go across, that you love in your life. Let's focus in on that. Let's focus in on what you're grateful for. Take that in. Let that lift you up to a higher place, a higher elevation. Now in the strength of gratitude, Close your eyes. Mm. And I want you to see a gate. And as you see a gate, you're the architect. Any kind of gate you want, I want you to see that gate clearly. And now I want you to pass through that gate. And as you pass through the gate, you come into this place in nature that's so incredible. It can be a place you've been to, a combination of places, or you're co-creating. Go into a lush place of beauty and just simply enjoy the peace and calm that you find in this incredible incredible place that you've chosen to come to. Take it in and just appreciate the nature that you're in. Nature loves to be appreciated, so it's just radiating an energy. Oh my gosh, you're just breathing it. Breathe it through your nose all the way to the pit of your stomach. Take at least five very, very deep breaths because you're, 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 you're lighting the flame deep within you. And feel already a lighter load, a more excited feeling, a power beyond your, your own. Now go ahead and go through another gate. And when you go through that gate, oh my gosh, there you are in your life. There you're living. If you're an athlete, you can see yourself performing at your highest level. If you're in business or an entrepreneur, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, that this gift that's been given you to, to bring forth, see yourself doing it. At the highest. See yourself even when there's challenges that all of a sudden, wow, that was a gift in disguise. And all of a sudden you're accomplishing more because of it. Feel what it feels like to move into that that you see. Now just own it for a moment. 
own it. Not as in wanting it, but already having it. Celebrate that it's here for you. Celebrate that you even have the vision to step into something that's awesome for you. Hold on to that and feel that. See the commitment that it took for you, the consistency it took for you to stay in the strength of this vision. But this vision is what led you to now having this. You didn't wait to celebrate it. You celebrated it from the first step you took. And every step became a celebration. So now that you're owning this victory, it feels so good. And there's more victories for you to achieve. So see yourself living in that fully. Even when there might be some fear wrapped into achievement. See yourself working through the fear. Breathing through it so that you truly can allow yourself to step into that achievement. Now go ahead. Come back through the gate. Come back into this place of nature. Oh, what a gift it is. What an incredible gift it is to come and just again rejoice in this beautiful place. You didn't have to pay anything. You didn't have to fly any place. You just put yourself here magically and you're as inspired and the strength here is so undeniable. See a well of water. Mm, drink from it. It's the clearest, most refreshing water you've ever tasted. What a strength it is. What a power it is. And you can feel it running through your veins. There's a strength in you that goes far beyond you. Who am I? Who am I to accomplish this? Who are you not to? Because now you're tapped in that you can accomplish anything. So walk in that strength. Walk in that knowing. Now even fear or even obstacles will not stop you because you have seen it. You've been to the top of the mountain. You've seen the other side. You have a dream. Now you boldly can step into that and take the action behind it to create it into reality. What a gift that is. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Now step out through that gate. Open your eyes. Whew. Remarkable. You're game ready. Have an awesome week. Just take on the week with strength. The strength that's always there for you. Boy, just step into it. And I'm looking at so many people to join, um, and I'm so grateful. And Shane, I'm giving you a call. Not Shane Austin, but Shane Austin's on it. I will call you later. But Shane Peratt, I'm calling you because there's been something I wanted to talk to you about. So be ready. Hope you're available. All of you, I, want, I hope this is meaningful because this is how you achieve success. When I was at the UN... And they asked me, how do we accomplish that which we're trying to do and bringing more harmony within countries? I said, I have a dream. It all starts with a dream. And you got to have a vision. And then you got to be willing to step into it. Take action behind it. What a blessed life we have when we step into that. There's a power in the energy that we just created. So use that energy like you've just plugged in. And you've been charged up. Take it on. Move forward. I'll see you next Monday. Some of you, I get to see you this Wednesday because we start another Beast Mode on 30 Day Challenge. And I'm telling you what, we rocking it. If you think this little bit we rock, <laughs> have a call with us in Beast Mode 30 Day Challenge every Wednesday and Friday for the next four weeks and then get into all the, the, the training videos. Whew. You'll be flying with the Eagles in that current that just is flows easily and effortlessly. You start flowing with the river rather than try to swim upstream. That's what you get. Thank you again. I will look forward to seeing you next Monday. And absolutely those that are going to be on with me Wednesday, get ready to rock because we will rock. <laughs>